integrating rational functions. Now rational means that we can express something as a fraction, so we're going to have a look at how to make those fractions a bit easier to integrate. So you've got something like this. This is a fairly simple one. If you wanted to integrate this function, then you want to separate out those pieces of the fraction. Because we've got a simple denominator, that's fairly straightforward to do. So we can take each part of the numerator and write it over the denominator as separate fractions. Then we simplify them. And we'll get the integral is now going to be of 2x squared plus 7 minus 3 over x. And each of those pieces we know how to integrate. So we do them one at a time. And if you can't remember how to integrate any bits of those, just go back and look at one of the previous videos. And of course, don't forget your plus c. And now let's have a look at one that's a little bit trickier. So we've got 10x plus 3 over 2x plus 1. Now you can use something called long division or algebraic long division on this. There is a video about that on my channel if you want to take a look. Um, I'm going to show you an alternative method here which is sometimes referred to as algebraic juggling. So again we want to separate out the fraction into pieces we can cope with. So first of all if we imagine that we've got that 2x plus 1 on the bottom and how could we write the top as a multiple of 2x plus 1. So the first term there, that 10x, what would we have to multiply 2x plus 1 by to make 10x? So the, to get that 2x to be a 10 would need a 5 in front of it. Now if we multiply that bracket out we will get 10x plus 5. We won't get the 10x plus 3 that we were looking for. So we need to adjust it to make it equal. So we've got to take 2 off because that bracket gives us a plus 5. We need to take 2 so that we're back to the plus 3 we originally started with. And then we can separate out the fraction like we did on the first one into its two pieces which helps us because now we can cancel that 2x plus 1 so that we've just got if we're integrating that 5 that gets left over that becomes a 5x and integrating the other piece that's log of 2x plus 1. Okay, so another example here, we've got 4x squared minus 2x plus 2 over 2x minus 5. So a little bit more work to do on this one. We've got a few more terms. So first we think about taking out that 2x, plus, uh, 2x minus 5. Now to turn that first term into 4x squared, we will need a 2x on the outside. If we had that 2x from that first bracket, it will give us 4x squared minus 20x. Whereas we only want minus 2x. Let me just backtrack a second. Multiplying out those brackets, the 2x times the minus 5 gives us minus 10x, not minus 20x. So then to adjust it to become minus 2 from what was minus 10, we need to add on an 8x. And then we've got the 2 to finish things off. So that helps us get the 2x out, because if we cancel that 2x minus 5 with the 2x minus 5 on the bottom, we'll be left with just the 2x. But we've still got 8x plus 2 over 2x minus 5 to deal with. So if we take out the 2x minus 5 again, we'll need a 4 in front of it to make the 8x. If we multiplied out that 4 by that bracket, we would get 8x minus 20, whereas we want plus 2. So to turn that minus 20 into a plus 2, we need to add on 22, and then that will be equivalent. Again, we go through and we cancel, so we're left with just the 4, and then a 22 over 2x minus 5 dx. Now this is at a point where we can integrate every one of those terms. Um, we've kind of simplified it down into pieces that we can deal with. As soon as we've got a piece on the end that's just a number over a single term of x, as in like no powers of x, then we're good to go. So we've got x squared from the first term when we integrate that, then we get 4x, and then we've got um, 11 log 2x minus 5 for the last term.